Hello, everyone, and good evening, and welcome to tonight's presentation, which is all about the Bright Future Scholarship, which is offered for Florida high school graduates. Um, I am going to be, I am broadcasting live tonight over multiple channels, so good to see everyone. Um, and thank you, some, I've heard back from so many of you who are in attending or planning to attend, um, already have some good questions about the Bright Future Scholarship. Um, Jason will be in the back background as well too, keeping an eye on the chat for us. Um, and then um, I'm going to get started. So I'm going to jump right into the presentation. Um, let me just make sure my screen looks good there. And let's see. Just excellent. Good. All right. So um, as noted, we are broadcasting over several platforms this evening. We are also making a recording of tonight's webinar, um, and it'll be posted on scorewebinars.com. You'll also get an email as well advising you once that's been posted, um, and you can watch that at your convenience 24-7, along with many of our other previously recording webinars. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, I don't think I did that. Um, my name is Kathy Hart. I'm an educational consultant with Score at the Top Learning Centers and Schools, and I'm also a test prep instructor. All right, so I got a pretty comprehensive agenda for you this evening. Um, we are going to be looking at the current Bright Futures requirements, the application process, how to keep and renew your scholarship once you've earned it, and then I'll be doing a deep dive into those three um, components of the Bright Futures Scholarship. Um, so those requirements of test scores, GPA, and those service hours. Um, we'll also look at those institutions accepting the Bright Futures Scholarship and also give you a bit of an idea of what your monetary value of your scholarship could be. But before we get into all that, first of all, a little overview of the Bright Futures Scholarship and its history. So the Bright Futures Scholarship is funded by the Florida Lottery, and its intent is to keep the best and brightest, the high achieving Florida high school students in state following high school graduation for their post-secondary educational plans. Um, it has been around since 1997, and it emulates Georgia's Hope Scholarship, which does something similar to our Bright Futures. Now, the scholarship was maxed out in the year 2008, um, providing scholarships for 39% of Florida graduates. So thereby in 2011, tougher requirements were instituted to make that uh, scholarship a little bit harder to achieve, a little bit more challenging to achieve, also save the state some money. And then if you look at the numbers since 2014, 2015, only roughly around 20% of Florida grad, uh, high school graduates are eligible to receive those scholarships. So right around 21, 22% for the last few years. Now, one thing that's important to note about the Bright Futures Scholarship is because it's funded by Florida state money, it's also subject to legislative review each year. So these requirements can change from year to year. Um, two of the most notable um, changes, um, the most recent ones, um, came in first in 2001 when the $600 book, um, uh, book stipend was removed for students who uh, were Florida academic scholars. Don't worry, I'm going to talk about the different categories momentarily. Um, so that was removed. So students um, who had received that level of scholarship had been receiving $300 per term per semester uh, for a book allowance. Um, and by removing that, the state of Florida saved a good little chunk of change there. And then the most recent change, which has been very exciting for, for a lot of our students, is this year, so 2022-2023, paid work hours can now satisfy the service hours requirement. And more on that later. Now, so let's look at the general qualif qualifications in order to receive the scholarship. And actually, this was one of my first questions I received. So this is this is great. So citizenship. So in order to receive the Bright Future Scholarship, you do need to have Florida residency, and you also do need to be a U.S. citizen. So those are first and foremost, those are our, our, our two basic requirements. Next, you need to be receiving a high school diploma, 
from a pl Florida public high school or a registered Florida private school. Now let's look at, there are some exceptions to those, those types of uh, students. Um, so what we might call non-traditional students. So students that are homeschooled in the state of Florida that might be receiving the GED um, diploma, that might be graduating mid-year. Um, all, all, there are also Florida high school students or Florida residents who might be living and studying out of state due to their parents' employment. So there are certain exceptions um, for this, you know, where you graduate from high school requirement. Because each one is a little different, I'm going to start off by referring you to the Bright Futures Handbook. If you're a student or a parent of a student who falls into one of these um, into one of these categories, if you just type in Bright Futures Handbook um, and then you just want to refer to Chapter One, and there's a page for each of those non-traditional students, and it goes into great detail on what those students will need to do to qualify and receive the Bright Futures Scholarship. So I just want to point that out because I know that's a common question and there's a lot of detail for each that we just don't have time to go into this evening. Um, now, another piece of the piece of the, the scholarship requirements is the completion of the Florida financial aid application by August 31st of graduation year. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a few minutes. But the FFAA, so for my current seniors, if you're class of 2023, so you have until August 31st, 2023 to fill out this form. If you're a current junior, so class of 2024, um, you have until um, you, the, uh, the FFAA doesn't open for your graduating year until October 1st, 2023, and then you have until August 31st, 2024 to complete the FFAA. Um, additionally, you need to be admitted and enrolled at an eligible Florida college or university, and that can be public or private, and I'll show you some examples of those towards the end of tonight's presentation. You do need to maintain enrollment of six credit hours per term or more. Um, you can't have been convicted or pled no contest to any felony charges. And as I noted earlier, um, it is subject to change with each legislative session. So those general qualifications and also some of those specific requirements when we're looking at hours, GPA and test scores. So definitely we'll be keeping an eye on this. We'll, we always like to, to, to um, track what Bright Futures is up to, any changes that we need to share with our students. So keep an eye out on our pages and we'll be happy to inform you of any of those. All right. So now I've just used a lot of, um, of terminology to describe the Bright Future. So let's look at a general overview of the scholarship, and then we'll look at what that application looks like. So these are the requirements for the 2023 and 2024 graduates. That's what's publicized as of today. So let's look at, there are in fact four levels of the Bright Future Scholarship. Um, I'm only gonna cover the, the two highest levels. That's the Florida Academic Scholars, the FAS, and the Florida Medallion Scholars, the FMS, which is the types of scholarships that students who are planning to continue their um, post-secondary education at a four-year uh, college or university are likely going to be working uh, towards. Now, there are two other gold seal um, uh, scholar awards that are intended for students that might be pursuing a vocational um, post-secondary education. Again, you could, if that sounds like something that, that applies to you, definitely check out the Bright Futures Handbook for more information. So let's start with our FAS. Now, the FAS awards 100% of tuition and fees based on a public institution and students who achieve this level of the Bright Futures um, have a recalculated GPA of 3.5. And for the class of 2023, have a 1330 on the SAT or higher. For class of 2024, this number bumps up by 10 points. You will need a 1340 or higher or an ACT of 29. That's going to stay the same for class of 2023 and class of 2024. So you need 100 hours of community service or paid work. You can't mix and match. You can't combine the two. So it's 100 hours of either community service or 100 hours of paid work. 
Um, you meet those requirements in addition to the general qualifications that I just went over, and then you can earn 100% of tuition and fees, again, based on public institution rates. For the FMS, so the next tier there, Still a selective, um, selective uh, requirements, a maybe a little bit easier for certain students. You'll need a recalculated core GPA of 3.0, an SAT or ACT. Um, so the SAT needs to be 1210, your ACT needs to be 25. And that, those numbers are gonna be the same for this year's graduating class, 2023, as well as next year's 2024. And then you have 75 hours of community service or 100 hours of paid work to meet those hours requirements. And students um, meeting those requirements, plus general qualifications, will um, receive 75% uh, of tuition and fees covered, again, based on a public institution's credit per hour rate. All right, so let's look at applying. Um, and this will be for seniors. If you haven't filled out your Bright Futures form, uh, you can follow along with me. So you want to create a student account at this website here. Um, so it's Florida Student Financial Aid SG.org. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to land on a page that looks like this. You're going to find that first time applicants right at the top of the of, of the page there. And then you're going to cl click on create a student account. So when you're going to create your student account, you will need your social security number. This is the student social security number. And you're going to want to use a personal email address when creating this account. Now, I know many students do like to use a school email address in part because that is the email that they're more likely to check throughout the day or remember to check at least. Um, however, because Bright Futures, you're going to be checking your Bright Futures award amounts um, through the summer. So after you graduate from high school and in certain instances, um, high schools will deactivate those student accounts, you know, um, in a relatively short time following graduation. Um, so always use a personal email address. And this is just a great tip. This is something we recommend for all of our students. Create a personal email address that's specific, um, professional sounding, and is uh, used specifically for everything in the college admission process. So whether that's bright futures, uh, getting your test scores to your college board, your common app account, any other um, scholarships, um, scholarships accounts. Um, always have a personal email, save your username and login, save your username and login for your Bright Futures account, um, and you'll have all that information easily accessible. Now, after you fill out that profile, then you're going to complete and submit the FFAA. So you'll see, please click here to complete the Florida Financial Aid application. Now, just to point out that this is separate from the FAFSA, which is the Federal Aid uh, Student Loan um, application. That's something completely different. You don't need to have, at least as of the current year, I always preface by saying that you don't need to have a FAFSA on file um, in order to receive the Bright Future Scholarship. That's another um, common question that we get. Now, filling out the FFAA, so students, make sure you have a, a parent or family member with you um, to help you out. Um, shouldn't take very long. It's a relatively straightforward um, application. You're going to be entering in some demographics, some um, academic information, and then you'll click submit and off it goes to Bright Futures. And we'll look at what happens next. Um, and just a reminder about that, um, that, that length of time that you have to complete your FFAA. So the FFAA will open up in October 1st of your senior year. And then you have to have it filed no later than August 31st of your graduating graduating year. So current year seniors, that's going to be August 31st, 2023. Um, my current juniors, this will open up for you on October 1st, 2023. And then you just have to have the FFAA completed no later than August 31st, 2024. All right. So what happens next? So after you have completed that form, so Bright Futures is gonna communicate with your high school to receive your updated GPA and your community service or work hours. And if you are attending a Florida public high school, the public high schools automatically send official transcripts to the Department of Education for those Bright Futures evaluations. 
Um, students, if you're in a private school, you know, check with your college counselor, your guidance counselor. Um, usually the process is, is similar. And as, as I mentioned, for those non-traditional students to include homeschool students, uh, GED, um, out-of-state students, et cetera, um, just check with the Bright Futures Handbook to see what, that, what those follow-up steps are. Now, in order to get your, um, your SAT or ACT scores to Bright Futures, you need to send those qualifying scores to one of the Florida 12 state universities. Likely, you're already going to be doing that as part of the application pro process because our Florida state universities are not test optional. They require the submission of test scores. So when you send those set of scores, so this means going to your college board account, your ACT student account, logging in, um, selecting send scores, picking which, which scores you, you want to send for which uh, test dates. Um, and the Department of Education, again, can pull those when you send those to one of our 12 uh, state universities. Um, and just to, to, to mention that Bright Futures does, just like the state universities, does super score your SAT or ACT. All right, so those initial awards, so if you, if, if you have all of your, um, that, your transcripts, your hours, your, um, your, your test scores um, submitted on the early end, you can see your initial award in March with the final award posted in July. Again, check your login, check your account to see that information. Now, what's kind of neat is you can earn, based on that early evaluation, an initial FMS award. So remember, that's the 75% of tuition and fees based on a public institution. But let's say you're still trying to meet a, the GPA, the hours, or the test requirements. Um, you can shoot for that higher FAS award, so working on meeting those requirements, to post in July. Now, you're wondering, OK, I've met all those requirements. Everything is on its way. Where, where is, is the check in the mail? Where, 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 where's, where's my scholarship? So your scholarship is, in fact, going to be calculated and dispersed through your financial aid office and typically at the end of the drop ad period. So a couple weeks into the term, into the, the, the semester, let's say. And again, of course, that's going to be, you know, you're, you'll get an estimated award amount, but then the final award amount will be based on the number of classes that you're, you're actually taking. And remember, you need to take um, upwards of six credit hours or more um, per semester um, in order to um, to receive your bright futures. As always, just with anything um, throughout the college application process, through any scholarships, you always want to monitor your application status. Go to floridastudentfinancialaid.org. You'll find your login um, information there. There, usually you'll also receive an email after you create your account with a link to click to log in. So hang on to that. And as always, if you have any questions throughout the process, do reach out to the Office of Student Financial Assistance. I put their number on the screen as well as their email address. I'll pause for a second if you want to grab a screenshot of those. Um, you can also find those um, on their website as well, too. And any questions along the way, they are very responsive and always happy to help out. All right, so you've got that Bright Futures Award. How do you keep it? What does that look like as you move into your college years? So. First of all, you don't need to reapply each year to keep your Bright Futures Award. You will automatically be evaluated for renewal at the end of the spring term. So in addition to those credit hours, they're also going to be looking for a certain level of, of your college GPA. So this is different from your the, the high school one that I, that I showed you earlier and that we'll talk a little bit more about. So in order to keep the FAS, so that's that 100% tuition um, and fees, you need to maintain a college GPA of 3.0. For the FMS, so that's seven, the 75%, you need to maintain that college GPA at a 2.75. Now, you are allowed a one semester dip and recover. So sometimes if you're, if say you're an FAS recipient and your, your GPA drops below a 3.0 but still is within the FMS range, your scholarship will drop to the FMS level, but you can recover it back to the FAS. Um, and likewise, if, if, if it falls below, um, you, you can still recover. And Bright Futures says 
Um, and this is in there um, also in their handbook as well, too, that they allow for this, this dip in recovery within the, the first year. Um, and then just one thing to note it, uh, to note is you can't unfortunately upgrade your Bright Futures scholarship if you have met the requirements for FMS by the time you graduate from high school. So that includes your test scores, GPA, and uh, worker service hours. Even if your your college GPA is at that FAS level, unfortunately, you cannot upgrade your scholarship to um, to the FMS. Um, and always, always, always. Because the bright futures, um, you, you never know what's going to happen. So even though the bright futures has to be used at an in-state public or private institution, always apply, be, even if you are set on attending college out of state, because you simply don't know what, what will happen. Um, I know my, my own daughter is, is attending um, a school out of state, but, you know, we made sure at the end of her senior year that she had filled out all of her bright futures, um, her bright futures um, uh, requirements, um, got everything on file. And that way, if, if plans change, we know it's there um, for her to use when, when she comes back. Um, and if that's certainly the case with students, if you do need to either recover a bright futures scholarship, if you do need to um, uh, reinstate a, a Bright Futures scholarship, there are forms on the Bright Futures website that you can fill out. Um, all right, so now that we've covered um, general requirements and the application process and some of the timelines, let's do a little deeper dive into those three requirements. So GPA test scores and those hours. So let's start with the GPA requirements. So for FAS, I need a 3.50 or better. For FMS, I need a 3.00 or better. Now, this is the high school weighted Bright Futures GPA. So this is actually going to look a little different from how your high school might weigh some of those honors AP level courses and also how a college might recalculate a weighted GPA. So this is the Bright Futures calculation. So first of all, they are only going to look at 16 courses. So four credits of English, four credits of math. So that's gonna be algebra one or higher, three credits of science, two to include labs, three credits of social science, so that's your history, government, economics, psychology, geography, and others, two credits of world language, and they have to be sequential. So we're looking at Spanish one, Spanish two. If I just did Spanish one, French one, that wouldn't count for Bright Futures. And of course, Bright Futures is also going to look at those academic core classes falling under those, um, those high level of courses to include AP, IB, ACE, and also dual enrollment. Now, to calculate the weighted, uh, the Bright Futures weighted GPA, first you're going to take those letter grades and convert them to points. And this is pretty standard. A is worth four points. F is worth zero. And then the weighting is going to look a little different. So you're going to add a quarter point per semester, or so let's say a half point for a full year course, for an honors level course, and that would include a pre-ACE, pre-IB, um, pre-AP class, and the same honors bump, that half point for the full year, quarter point for the semester, is going to be also given to full ACE courses, full IB courses, full AP courses, and the academic dual enrollment classes. So dual enrollment classes that fall within those core classes I just showed you. Um, and then you're just going to do the math. You'll add up all the points, divide the total points by the number of courses, and that's going to be your Bright Futures GPA. And again, I know that that um, you know I, I, we work with students from from all all over the state, and every high school calculates weighted GPA a little bit different differently. So this is the way that Bright Futures has standardized this. Now, what happens if you're really close, but you're not quite there? So within that, so you've got those 16 core courses, but Bright Futures will also pull up to two additional courses um, from either those 
academic that academic core so the english math science social science world language if you've taken any ace ap or ib art fine arts courses those can also count two of those two additional courses if needed and of course you know one of the reasons why it's always a good idea to challenge yourself with a high level of courses throughout high school is if you do need to pull from some of those additional courses you can you know get those that those weighted uh those weight that that course weight to bring that up to the um the level of gpa you need in any honors ib ap or academic dual enrollment so that's how they're going to recalculate the um the gpa now just to pause here because i know another question that that i received um is you know can can i qualify for the bright future scholarship without them seeing my gpa or maybe even better without seeing my test scores so the answer is yes but only in certain select circumstances so this is what's called the merit recognition program for bright futures and as you can see this is geared towards very high achieving students so if you're a national merit finalist and scholar, if you've been or if you were part of the National Hispanic Recognition Program, if you're earning the ACE diploma or if you're earning the IB diploma, um, you can receive your Bright Future Scholarship without consideration to your GPA or your ACT and SAT test scores. Now, the service hours are going to be the same, still 100 or 100 for the FAS, 75 uh, volunteer, 100 paid work for FMS. So that's how a student can qualify and earn a Bright Future Scholarship without having to submit test scores. Um, now, for students that might have taken an IB or ACE curriculum, but not have earned the diploma, the GPA is ignored, but you, you still need to submit qualifying SAT or ACT scores. And of course, those community service or paid work hours across the board, you will need those. Um, and you're, if you're wondering what does an AP or an, uh, excuse me, an ACE or an IB curriculum look like, again, I'll refer you to the Bright Futures Handbook. They detail the number of courses the categories of courses and any other additional requirements that might fall under that curriculum umbrella. And of course, as a nice little bonus for the top, top students, there is the top scholar recognition, which awards an additional $44 per credit hour to the top floor of FAS student in each district. Um, so that means just one student per county and they calculate that it is a product of the Bright Futures weighted GPA, along with the highest test score. Um, and students should be notified that within their Bright Futures account if they've achieved that very, very high honor. All right. So now that we've looked at the Bright Futures GPA and how that's calculated and what type of courses are used and how you can maybe make up the difference if needed, Let's look back again at those at those test score requirements. So again, on my screen, just a quick reminder for my 2023 graduates, FAS, we need a 29 or a 1330. For 2024, it's gonna be a 29 or a 1340. For FMS, you will need a 25 for your ACT or a 1210 for your SAT for both classes of 2023 and 2024. And just to point out, as I mentioned earlier, so these are super scores. And what a super score means is, let's say I take a May SAT and a June SAT. So if my what Bright Futures and indeed the Florida State Universities and many other colleges will do this as well, they'll recalculate in essence or cherry pick your best reading score. So if my reading score was higher in May and then they'll combine it, let's say my math score was higher in June. So they combine those two scores and that's my super score. Now you don't self, uh, you don't you don't send a, a super score. What you're going to end up doing is um, a part of your uh, sending your test scores. You'll send that set of score from May, the set of scores from June, and they'll do that that super score recalculation um, um, behind the scenes there. Now for current seniors, so my class of 2023, it isn't too late to work on those test scores. Now the February ACT has just passed. 
but there are still opportunities to take the ACT again um, in time for the cutoff for the current year's uh, seniors, excuse me, is June 30th. Um, so you still have time to take the ACT in April and June. Um, there is an upcoming SAT in March, as well as two more later on in the spring. So you can certainly work to earn those scores, whether you're just trying to make the Bright Futures FMS, FMS cutoff, or maybe you're working towards achieving that higher level of the SFAS. Now, juniors in the audience, many of you are just getting started on your, um, on your testing pathways. So some of you might be starting out with an, SA, uh, an SAT, um, school day SAT, maybe a few of these later in the spring or in the summer. Likewise, with the ACT starting in April, and there is a July test date. Um, and the two score date, uh, two test dates that I've highlighted on my screen for each test, um, those are ones for a, a, just a, a, a small additional fee when you go to register for these. You can get a copy of your test, a copy of your answers, and a copy of the correct answers. And this is a great study guide, you know, especially as you're preparing to take any future tests whether you're working on these for your bright futures or for admission um, to the colleges on your list. Um, and just to show you, these are some of the upcoming dates, um, current juniors, you'll probably be testing again as seniors. And these are the upcoming dates for both the SAT and the ACT through December. And just one thing I wanna point out, the SAT no longer offers a, um, an essay component. Um, that went away a few years ago. The ACT still offers an optional essay. Um, there, is, um, there is no need to register for it unless a college on your list requires it, very few do. And your essay score is not used as part of your Bright Futures, um, G, uh, Bright Futures calculation. All right, and then lastly, let's check out those hours requirements. So for FAS, we're looking at 100 hours of either volunteer work or paid work. For FMS, we're looking at 75 hours of volunteer service or 100 hours of paid work. Now, let me just point out here because I've given you some pretty concrete dates, right? So it's August 31st for the FFAA, June 30th to meet, um, to meet those um, 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 uh, testing requirements. Um, and of course, your GPA um, will be calculated once you your grades are finalized and your um, your counselor uploads those transcripts to Bright Futures um, to the Department of Education. Um, so let's just look at, at service or work hours. So that's something students that that um, you do need to be responsible for. So one of the things you do want to make sure you you're aware of is what is your district school district's policy if you're at a private independent school what is your um, school administration's policy on what count as approved service or work hours it's usually spelled out very very clearly um, in their community service um, requirements of course you want to keep a record of your hours usually this involves after you complete a, a, a community service, let's say you do a four hour beach cleanup, typically you'll go up you'll, uh, to the adult who's in charge, they will sign off on your hours. So that way they will count. Um, and always confirm receipt of hours when you submit them to your high school and always keep a record of them. Um, a lot of times students are walking around with their, with their community service hours trackers. It's a piece of paper, they haven't folded up, it's in their backpack. Um, when you do go to submit it, um, do make sure you 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 know make take a copy make a copy of it so that way you have it for your 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 records um, and again always keep an eye out for when is that final deadline um, before you graduate high school in order to get those hours um, those hours submitted so for some schools it might be May first let's say if you have a late May graduation um, and Bright Futures does note that the service or work hours. Um, should include a reflection element so students might be invited to, you know, write about, comment on the type of work that they've done. All right, so now let's look at where you can use your scholarship. So let's start out with the Florida's dozen. So these are the 12 state university, uh, state university system, college and universities. 
um, you know, starting all the way on the on the west westernmost part of the state, University of West Florida, all the way down to Southeast Florida International University in Miami, um, and ten other schools in between. Um, so. Just to give you an idea, and I'll just preface this by saying that because some students may be taking six credit hours a semester, some might be taking 12, others might be taking 15. So the monetary value of your scholarship, that's gonna be calculated by the Office of Financial Aid and you'll see those funds show up again after add drop. But this is just to give you a little idea of what your scholarship could potentially save you over four years of college. Um, and again, it's based on, we, we crunched some numbers and this is based on the cost per credit hour um, at our, four, our, our Florida's 12. And again, just gives you a nice idea of the value of your Bright Future scholarships. Again, that might, might look different, a little different for everyone, but just to give you a good idea here. And of course, we always have many students that um, might need a little assistance for, for for test prep, and certainly we we'd say, um, you know, better better returns than than Buffett just by in, investing um, into test prep. Um, you can see the return on investment is quite impressive when you compare it to the amount that you're going to be saving over four years based on those tuition and fees. And also, as you are working towards meeting those bright futures requirements, you're also putting yourself um, in a good position um, for admission to our 12 state universities. Um, so on my screen, I'm just showing you the mid 50% of the SAT and ACT scores for students who started in fall 2022. So this year's current uh, first time in college cohort. And you can see that the mid range of those scores um, in most instances, you know, those those bright futures um, requirements uh, fall nicely within there. So as you're uh, preparing for bright futures, you're also preparing if, if any of these 12 schools are on your list, which for many of our Florida students, they in fact are. Florida uh, universities do require test scores. Um, and so you can, you can prepare for both your bright futures and college admission all, all at once. Now let's look at some other places um, where you can use your Bright Futures scholarship. So let's talk about the Florida college system um, where I'm sitting right now in my office in Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, one of Palm Beach State campuses is not too far from, from me. Um, and many students will start out at a state college school, maybe get their two year AA degree and then transfer seamlessly to a uh, one of Florida Florida's dozen to finish out their bachelor's degree. Now you can use your bright futures at the Florida college system. And what's really neat about the using it at the Florida college system as, as of right now, and this started, I believe in 2021 and, and it's current as of this year, again, always subject, always subject to change. But if you are an FMS recipient, so that's 75% of the tuition, um, and applicable fees at a four-year public institution, so those Florida dozen, the FMS will in fact cover 100% of tuition and fees, which is a really, really nice, um, which is which is really nice. Um, really, your 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 um, scholarship goes a little further by starting out at one of our Florida college um, schools. Now, what about private schools? Because the, um, the, the scholarship awards that you receive through Bright Futures, yes, they absolutely are accepted by private schools. And I'll show you that dollar amount momentarily. Um, but just to give you an example, these are the PCUF schools, the private colleges and universities of, of Florida. Um, you can see there's probably some um, familiar names on this list. This is not the only grouping of private schools that, that accept the um, that ex accept the bright futures. I just wanted to highlight some of the ones that um, you may have heard of. And if you are attending a private college, let's say the University of Miami, you can absolutely use your bright futures. Um, however, it is not going to cover 100% of a private college tuition. This is the value for the FAS. It's going to be $211 per credit hour, and that's based on a semester schedule. For the FMS, 
it's going to be $158 per credit hour. Same requirements as the Florida, uh, the public schools, is you do need to take a minimum of six credits per semester. And there are many, many more schools. If you would like to, you can scan this QR code. It will bring you to a page on the Bright Futures site. You can pick, there's a drop down menu at the top. You can select Bright Futures. There are nine pages. So you can see all those institutions that um, are eligible to receive Bright Futures funds. And don't forget, those are also going to include those two gold gold seal awards geared towards students who are going to be pursuing a vocational um, post-secondary education. Um, so like I said, you'll, you'll see a very complete list there. And just one thing to make note of, that you cannot use your Bright Future scholarship at out-of-state institutions since it is money coming from Florida, the state of Florida. It doesn't need to stay within the state. Um, I know sometimes students that are looking at colleges that might be on the border, sometimes those colleges will offer like an out-of-state um, tuition waiver or something along those lines. So if you have any question about those, you're looking to attend one of those schools. Um, just read at, reach out to their um, Office of Financial Aid and they will be happy to answer those questions. Another thing to mention, um, and it's it's not affiliated, it's, it's part of the state grant system, um, but it's it's not it's it's separate from Bright Futures is the Ease grant, but they often get talked about together, so I wanted to bring them up. So Ease stands for Effective Access to Student Education. It's a non-need-based grant. And it is offered to Florida residents attending an eligible private institution in Florida. Again, you can find a list of those schools online. Um, and like the Bright Future Scholarship, it is also subject to legislative review annually. So that amount, the value of the grant can change from year to year. Currently, it's at $2,000 a year um, for qualified students. Um, and again, keep an eye out because this value can change. I think um, in the previous years, it was closer to 3,000, I believe 2,800, and now it's it's 2,000 per year. So for your ease grant, um, again, talking about um, those, those residency requirements, you do need to be a Florida resident. Um, you do also need to be a US resident. Um, you do need to be enrolled in a 12 credit hours per term at an eligible institute. Um, and even though you don't need a minimum GPA to receive the ease grant, um, they tell us that it is the renewal is based on a college GPA of a minimum of 2.0. Um, and again, you know, so if you're looking at a school, again, University of Miami, Nova Southeastern, some of those private schools um, for which you might be able to use your ease grant. If you just go to their financial aid page, there's information about it. Um, if you need to fill out any forms, whether to, um, to apply, to renew, all of that information you can find quite easily on the institution's um, own page. And again, just keep an eye out to see if that, if that value changes and what you might need to do year to year in order to renew it. So there, so hopefully um, I have covered um, all of your questions about the Bright Futures Scholarship. And of course, I'm gonna be jumping over and peeking at the chat in a few moments. And actually I do have a couple questions that had come in beforehand that I'm going to answer um, as well. But just to um, alert you to a few upcoming webinars that are gonna be given by Judy Rabinovitz, our owner, founder, and certified educational planner. Um, she is going to be talking about the digital SAT, which is big news um, in the testing world. So the digital SAT will go into effect for U.S. domestic students um, in the spring of 2024. Um, we are. She's also going to be talking about her um, her ever popular um, selective college admission stand out and get in webinar. And we are currently running um, a special on our score at the top.com promotion site. So this is a GPA checkup. 
So this gives you the opportunity to work with one of um, the educational consultants on, on the team, probably me. Um, and um, what we'll do is we'll show you or I'll show you how the colleges are going to recalculate your GPA. We'll look at that academic core. We'll look at how the colleges weight those grades both in standard level and higher level courses, which is going to be different than how Bright Futures recalculates that, that GPA. Um, and also look at course progression and look at making you, um, positioning you for, for college admissions. So do check that out. Um, and just to make a brief mention, although it is um, end of February when I'm, when I'm giving this uh, webinar, of course, it never hurts to, to think ahead to summer. And we offer our very popular college admissions boot camp in conjunction with Suncoast High School and Boca Raton High School. But you don't need to be a student of either to attend. Um, it, last year, uh, Barb Leventhal, um, one of the educational consultants on, on, on our team and myself led the boot camp, um, and we offered it both in person and hybrid. It's geared for uh, rising seniors, um, well, so students who are our are, are current seniors, rising seniors, because we offer it right at the start of their senior year. And it really helps position students um, to get a lot of those college application tasks done. Um, you know, even right before school, just as school is getting started. All right, so I am going to pause here and, of course, say thank you. And across the bottom of my screen, and I'll leave this slide up, you can see our contact information, thetop.com. You can see the phone numbers for our five offices in Southeast Florida. And of course, we always work with students virtually across the state of Florida, across the country, across the world as well, too. Um, and let me first of all, so I'm just going to pop over here so I can see, um, see the chat. But before I look at the chat, um, I had a few questions that came in beforehand. So let me address those. Um, so the first one, actually, I, I, I talked about right in um, at the start of the presentation, um, which is about citizenship. And yes, you do need to be both a, um, a US citizen and a Florida resident in order to qualify for the Bright Future Scholarship and that East Grant that I man mentioned as well. Um, another one that I got, and I think I covered this um, as well as part of the presentation, was how can I earn the Bright Future Scholarship without test scores? So those are gonna be for those um, exceptionally high achieving students who are National Merit Finalists, National Hispanic Recognition Program, ACE Diploma, or IB Diploma. Those students um, don't need to have um, GPA or test scores on file in order to receive the Bright Future Scholarship. They just need those community service hours. Um, also, I had a great question as well, too. So can a dual enrollment student graduate with their AA in high school and still be eligible for Bright Futures? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, and usually when a student is doing a concurrent high school diploma and AA, typically they're doing it under the auspices of like an early college program, a college academy program. And so one of the things that, that their advisor in that program, so their guidance counselor, will also help make sure that the dual enrollment classes that, are that they are taking are going to match those bright futures core high school classes that um, that they they are taking, um, and there is in fact um, there is a bright futures course table online that a student if a student is 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 working on that independently is working on an AA independently they can um, they can see um, they can see those those uh, which ones are going to fall into the bright futures core, but for the most part students. Um, you know, that I've worked with that are doing those those special types of programs are usually doing it with under the guidance of both their district high school and a pre-college program, usually through one of those state colleges. Um, and so they are getting some some guidance as well there. So but absolutely you can because you are working towards your, your diploma as long as you meet those bright futures requirements, the GPA, the test scores and those hours, then you can also earn your bright your bright futures, which is very nice. Um, let's see, I'm just going to go through here and let me see, um, let's see. So first question, any ideas and requirements for the class of 2025? Not yet, not yet. So that remains to be seen. Um, usually 
like I said, the, the, the newest requirement this year was um, for um, the, the paid work hours to now count um, along, well, not, uh, not uh, in, instead of the service hours, which was, which was brand new as of this year, we just saw that 10 point bump. And I think that was another question I just saw in the chat about the class of 2024, the, um, for the test requirements um, for the SAT, it goes from a 1330 to a 1340 for the class of 2024, but for class of 2025, um, is um remains to be seen all right let's see um let's see so let's see yeah so if the students completed more than 16 core courses can they pick and choose which to include to be considered for the scholarship i don't think the student necessarily makes that determination um usually the um the guidance counselor who's uploading that and then bright futures can look at those um at those at those courses and usually they tend to err in the, in the side of the the student's favor so you know those those weighted courses those ones that are going to get weighting um obviously they're going to look at um any any classes within the academic core and many times florida students are going to to max out um those those requirements and, and generally exceed them um so that would be be the case there um let me go through here okay yeah so if you have florida prepaid and bright futures what pays tuition first so bright futures goes first then followed by Florida prepaid. If there's any money in excess, um, then the student usually receives that in their account. Let's see here. Oh, okay. So this is a this is a good question here too. So let's say you go out of state for a few years at a college, and then you decide to come back to a Florida college. Would you still be eligible to use Bright Futures? Yes, absolutely. You do have a five year window. Um, but what you're going to need to do, and there is a form that you'll have to fill out to basically reinstate your, your Bright, Futures, um, Bright Futures scholarship. However, you have to have met all of those, those qualifications. So you will have to have um, your FFA on file um, by August 31st of your graduation year. You will have to have met the... Um, the bright uh, the the test scores by June thirtieth, following your 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 senior year graduate uh, your your senior year your graduation, um, and then likewise with your 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 GPA that's going to be based on your high school on your high school record, yeah. So as long as you have all of those in place before the the student leaves for college out of state, and then if they return again within that five year window, um, then they can they can um, re reactivate access that Bright Futures scholarship. And let's see. So let's see, are the work hours counted from the time of Bright Futures registration? Counted any time during the student's high school enrollment? Yes, so, so it's the second one, counting during the, the student's um, high school enrollment, yeah. So it's not from when you register with Bright Futures because Typically, what students will do, and usually you'll you'll get this information as part of when you when you when you enter high school, and usually every year there's a class meeting, and typically parents are invited, families are invited, um, and the guidance counselors will always talk about you know how do you submit your your community service, how do you submit your work, what counts and when, and yeah, it should be from from the start of from the start of high school. And let's see. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, this is another great question. So can we do either 75 hours of volunteer work, 100 hours, whoops, I just lost it, 100 hours of paid work? We need to do both. No, it's one or the other. Yes. Yeah, so it's 100 hours. So if you're working for that, that FAS, um, so that is going to be 100 hours of community service or 100 hours of paid work. Um, so if you're, if you, if you hold a job, you don't have time to do the community, to do community service, those pay, paid work hours, work hours, excuse me, will work fine. Um, likewise with the FMS. So the FMF, FMS, you need 75 hours of service, service hours, so volunteer service or 100 hours of paid work. So that hundred hours stays the same for work for both FAF, FAS and FMS. Um, but it doesn't stay this, uh, but it's, it varies um, for FAS or FMS. 
Um, let me see. And let's see. And I think, good. I think I got all of the questions. If for some reason I missed one of yours, let me type, let me see if I can type my email in here. I don't think I can. Um, but my email, and actually you're going to have my email because I'm sending out all of the, um, the, the invitations. So you have access to my email. Um, it's um, heart at score at the top.com. We're also streaming across uh, the bottom there, our contact information. Yeah, so for some reason I missed one of your questions, um, please reach out to me. I'm always happy to connect. And thank you all for attending this evening. Um, I hope you, you got a lot out of this. Um, I really love talking about the Bright Futures Scholarship. I think it's a great um, opportunity for our Florida high school graduates. And with that, I'm going to say good evening and good night and hope everyone has a lovely rest of your evening and we'll see you on the next one.